Hey, hey everybody, it's Scott again. Um, I haven't done this kind of thing in a while. I haven't done a, a new Scott's Thoughts video in a while. Uh, so I thought I should do that. Um, I was specifically told by Lance, Jeremy's manager that uh, it would be good for Jeremy's show if I would produce something new. So this is what I'm doing. Um, he hired a consultant and I have some notes here. H hang on a minute. I gotta, I gotta look this up. Um, wait a minute. Is this right? What? Is this the right thing? Oh, okay. Aldosterone renin electrolytes, including sodium and potassium. Oh, wait. No, this is written on the back. Sorry, I don't know what that was. Okay. Um. Uh, I'm supposed to say, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm not reading this. Lance, you should know better. Good grief. That's, I, I feel like I need a shower now. Uh, anyway, today on Scott's Thoughts, I want to talk about uh, a series that I deeply love and that everyone should deeply love because it's an American classic. It's it's one of the best. And uh, I am, of course, talking about the beloved uh, clay stop-motion animation classic, Gumby. Now, uh... I did try to record this once before and I got interrupted. So actually, you know what? I better, I'm going to, I'm going to go check outside really quick. I'm going to go check outside just to make sure I don't get interrupted or summon anything. Okay. All right. It, it looks like the, the coast is clear. Um, anyway, I want to talk about Gumby. So, uh, Actually, wait a minute. According to this, I have got to do a deep dive on Gumby before I talk about my feelings about Gumby so that you all know what I'm talking about. But listen, if you're listening to Scott's thoughts, you already know what I'm going to talk about because you are a person of taste. And if you're not, then go pick up the 2005 documentary film Gumby Dharma which tells you the history of Gumby why do I need to tell you that I'm not a journalist I'm not a documentarian why am why am I telling you about the deep dive history of Gumby why would I do that I don't want to do that I just want to talk about it I just want to talk about Gumby okay so I will say this Gumby was created in the 1950s by Art Cloakey, who was a very interesting man. Gumby is green. He is made of clay. He hangs out with uh, a little pony person named Pokey, the horse, and uh, a little yellow dinosaur named Prickle, and a blob lady mermaid i guess named goo and believe it or not these characters were inspired by the philosophical writings and thought of a beloved influential philosopher alan watts the author of many books on eastern philosophy designed for a western audience um but that's neither here nor there um, and I want to be here now. Wait, that's Ram Dass. I'm getting confused. Anyway, um, so G Gumby and his friends 
uh, they debuted in the 50s, and then they came back in the 60s, and then Art Clokey got divorced, and his ex-wife kind of took over the show while he was off being a hippie or something, and, uh, converting to Hinduism after being, I think, like a Presbyterian or something, and he also made Davy and Goliath, which is a show I've never seen because it involves a talking dog that I think only like a little boy could hear. And I, you know, I respect others' religious beliefs, but a talking dog is going too far. It feels wrong. It feels something about it. Anyway, I'm here to talk about Gumby. I'm here to talk about that little green clay guy. So, um, anyway, Gumby has, like, this kind of weird-shaped head, and I, I guess it was because when Art Cloakey was a kid, he liked looking at a picture of, like, his grandfather or his father or something who had, like, a weird, lumpy hairstyle. I learned this from a documentary about Gumby that I watched in the hospital as a child. When I was a child, I was in the hospital for dehydration. I, my body wasn't absorbing liquid correctly, which is one of many health problems I've had throughout my lifetime. And uh, I wanted to play Nintendo because they had an NES in that hospital. And at that point in my life, I had never gotten to play the NES. And I'd, I'd only ever heard of them from like older kids and older people because I was uh, of age in the SNES era, not the NES era. Anyway, um, I couldn't play it. They had the NES in the hospital. I was so excited, but I couldn't play it because I had to wear this stupid IV on my arm. I had to plug an RV into my arm and drive it to Payton Town. It sucked. So instead, I watched uh, E.T., and I watched the Gumby documentary, and I watched the Disney film, The Fox and the Hound, which is a form of abuse. You shouldn't show that movie to children. That, that was wrong that I was shown that, especially in a hospital. Why would you ever show that movie to a child? That is the most depressing movie. It is about aging and change and friendships falling apart. And now I'm thinking about it. And now I'm thinking about it, I'm getting upset. I'm getting upset all over again. I wanted to, I wanted to talk about Gumby. I'm going to talk about Gumby. Anyway, our Cloaky was a cool guy who believed in the environment. And he said, you know, we should protect the environment. So I'm going to make Gumby green to represent the environment. And he was... He paid his animators really well, and he had like a little Ganesh shrine or something. I don't know, but he was a he was a lovable fellow, and he was a unique and interesting man. And Gumby uh, got produced again. You know, his his wife took over the show after they got divorced. His ex wife did. Um, and then he just went around in the 70s to, like, flea markets and sold Gumby products in the desert at flea markets. Which I think is something we could all relate to, to do. And we all have that phase in our lives uh, where we like to just go to flea markets and sell Gumby stuff, you know. My uncle always wants me to go to, like, I don't know, like, flea markets and zed fests and jockalots and sell his... VHS tapes of his show and I try to resist this because it's not the life for me but it's a noble calling in a general way maybe not selling Jeremy's junk but in a general way the life of the jockey lot jockey is noble and good and true and that is my final word on that subject anyway um, but in the 80s all the, the kids who grew up in the 60s and 70s were like in college or they were young adults. And Art Cloakey saw an opportunity due to the demand to bring Gumby back. And he made a bunch of Gumby episodes in the 80s, which I watched throughout my childhood. And I loved these episodes and I, I loved them so much. 
and I bought in the 90s all of the toys, and I still have them. I mean, this is what they look like, and I've also got, like, these that are, like, the newer ones. The new, like, the new Gumby figures and figurines, and they're beautiful, and they adorn my bookshelves, and they make me happy when I am in my room living my life. Um, yeah. So, I, I love this. I love Gumby. I love everything about Gumby, pretty much. But, um, Gumby, uh, unfortunately, went out of production after the 90s, for the most part. Except for, like, maybe some commercials or something. And, uh, Art Cloakey, you know, passed away in the, uh, like, the 2000s or 2010s. I don't know. I don't really respect the concept of timekeeping, but something like that. And uh, his son inherited the estate. And then sadly, a few years ago, uh, I think in like 2018, his son, Joseph Cloakey, also passed away. And this is deeply sad to me because he seemed like a, a cool guy. And, um, you know, it could have been okay. It could have been fine. But apparently his heirs have sold the rights to Gumby to Fox. Fox Entertainment. This is, uh, the company owned by Rupert Murdoch. And it's known for, uh, Fox News. And I just, this is so upsetting to me. Because I, I just know they're not going to respect all the, the environmentalist and and open you know Alan Watts inspired Hinduism inspired philosophy of Art Cloakey and and the respect for children that Gumby represents because I mean why is there even a, a news network dedicated to being a furry there's nothing wrong with being a furry but you don't need a whole news network to talk about it, there's not that much news going on in the furry community. I mean, I feel like I would have heard about it if the furry community had that much news. And I just, I just don't think they're the right people to be r running the show when it comes to Gumby. I just don't think that's right. And, you know, that's, you know, that's a big issue with Gumby nowadays. But that's not really what I'm here to talk about. What I'm here to talk about today... It's something that's even worse than Gumby's rights being bought by the Fox Entertainment Company being turned into a bunch of probably garbage. Um, it's the fact that in the 90s, after the 80s run of the show ended, Art Cloakey made Gumby the movie. And in like, I don't know, 1995, you know, I was... There was nothing that I was more excited about than getting to see Gumby the movie. Now, I never got to see it in the theater. And I don't know if it even came out in the theater. But it came out in the, on the VHS. And it was it was on VHS in the Kmart. And I bought it. And I took it home. And, you know, I was expecting to see all of the things I loved about the show in the movie. You know, in the show, Gumby goes on adventures. He's like an adventurous little person of clay uh, and, and you know he and Pokey and Prickle and Goo his friend Tilly the talking chicken and Denali the Mastodon and the whole gang they had a band called the Gumbies and I loved that band I loved all those shows when they would air on Nickelodeon in the morning and after school, you know, you jam out to the Gumbies. It was like, what if a rock and roll band of the 80s had, like, a full set of instruments but somehow only made, like, MIDI music? It was a miracle! It was a miracle of musicianship! You know, the Gumbies were it for me. They were bigger than the Beatles! And I popped in the movie... And, you know, I saw, you know, all these references to things from the history of Gumby that I love so much. Like, it takes place in Gumbasia, which is, like, the setting of the original art film, no pun intended, that Art Cloakey made in the 50s. It's, like, this abstract art film called Gumbasia. 
and it was it was all there. It was it was all going to be perfect. And then the movie starts, and Gumby's talking about being in his band, and I'm I'm there for it, and I'm ready, and I'm waiting to rock out with that mini music, and I'm ready. And Goo and Prickle and Pokey are there, but they're not in the band. They're not in the band. It's not the same band anymore. Where are the Gumbies? Instead of the Gumbies, Gumby is in a band called the Clayboys. Why would he change bands? That band was named for him. What is this, like a side project? Is Gumby going to join new writers of the Purple Sage? Or the other ones? I mean, what's happening? Art Cloakie, why would you make this creative decision? I know that in the movie that uh, John R. Dilworth was a consultant. You know, for, you know, for those of you who remember, John R. Dilworth was the creator of Courage the Cowardly Dog. And apparently, he can't do anything that's not horror inspired. The new members of the, the Clayboys are called Thin Buckle, Fat Buckle, and No Buckle. Well, first of all, I don't like I don't like the idea that the last one's just got no pants. It's a little bit obscene. But we've never heard of these characters before. They just come out of nowhere. And they're just in a band with Guppy. And we're supposed to accept this. I just don't understand it! And if that's not bad enough, Denali and Tilly are not in the movie, except Denali's in footage during the credits, and Tilly's in it, but she doesn't talk. Why didn't she... Why, why didn't she talk? Did something happen? Why would Art Cloakie make a movie like this and make these changes and not explain them to the audience? It's a travesty. It's just, I'm still upset about this. I, you don't just, you don't just watch a Charlie Chaplin movie and then Charlie Chaplin starts talking. I mean, I guess unless it's like one of the talkies, one of the later ones. I guess that's kind of different. I guess, you don't just like watch an episode of Full House. And Uncle Joey just doesn't talk. You know, like, Michelle and Danny Tanner and Uncle Jesse and whoever else are getting into hijinks. And Dave Coulier is just standing there, mute. I got a hair on my mouth. I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm, I'm back. I, I had to get that hair out of my mouth and wash my hands for safety. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I needed to cool down for a minute, but... Why? Why doesn't Tilly talk? Why is Denali not even in the movie? Uh, I just get so upset. Anyway, um, the plot of the movie is that Gumby, uh, and his band, the Clay Boys, decide to play a, a benefit concert to help small farmers that are the victims of predatory lending from the Blockheads, who were the series' recurring villains. And, um, also they steal Gumby's dog because Gumby's dog cries pearls whenever he hears Gumby play rock music. So it's a pretty standard Gumby plotline. I, 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 you know, if I have any other criticisms of the film, it's just the fact that it's so, you know, standard for a Gumby plot. And also, you can see the armature things, like those things they used to keep the models held up. You can see those in a few frames during one of the musical sequences. And that's pretty embarrassing. I mean, come on. You know, I thought, I thought we're all professionals here. But apparently not! Um, I should also mention, I guess, that the music is like done by uh, one of the members of the band Starship. I don't, I don't know what else to say about that. It's, it's one of the members of Starship. Does the soundtrack to Gumby the movie. Also, I should probably say that the movie's title, when you actually watch it, like the on-screen title is Gumby 1. And I feel like somebody, like maybe somebody at the furry news network will make like a sequel to it now that will explain the... The absence of Denali and Tilly the chicken's voice. You know, may maybe something good will come of this corporate takeover. Um, or maybe the furry fox community will just sell me the rights to Gumby. And I'll make a Gumby movie. Because I've got so much time on my hands! I, I just want to watch the Gumby movie, but... I don't want those other characters, the Buckle Brothers, or whoever they are, I don't want them in it. The, the, the blue one looks like a blue Gumby with hair. Gumby creatures, except Goo, shouldn't have hair. Except, like, Pokey, who has, like, clay or plastic hair. That's fine. But it looks weird with real hair. It, it doesn't look right. I don't even want to say what it makes me think of. I would get pulled off the air. I would get I would get slapped down by the man. Anyway, so that's that's what upsets me about Gumby. Um You shouldn't change things abruptly and without explanation. And Art Cloakie, I love you, but I don't know why you did this. Um Anyway, yeah. I guess that's all I have to say. I can't think of anything else to say. I love Gumby. But I wish Gumby the movie was different. And I wish that as a child I didn't get that VHS tape. And there's a scene in the movie that parody parodies Star Wars. And there's a robot Gumby and Gumby cuts its hand off. And I've had nightmares about that moment for 30 years. Art Cloakey... I, I need a, a Ouija board. I, you owe me an explanation for this part of my childhood. Just the specific part. But there's a lot of other stuff that's not your fault. And also, you, you did create Gumby, and a lot of Gumby's really good. So I'm, I'm not going to stay mad at you. I just, I just want an explanation, that's all. Uh, I think I'm supposed to read something else. Aldosterone, renin, electrolytes including sodium and potassium. But, dang it, dang it, wrong side again. Uh, 
Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for new content. Ah, no! Lance, I'm not reading this. I'm done.